Welcome to the sixth and final episode of Migrate AWS Lambda to Azure Functions. In this episode, we'll be covering some advanced concepts such as security, identity, and continuous deployment. I'm starting with an empty function app I've named Advanced Functions. When we drill into the app, you can see that there's no functions that are currently defined. Instead of manually entering a function or even deploying directly, I'm going to set up continuous deployment so that the function will automatically deploy from my GitHub repo. Before I set up the link to the repository, I'm going to tell the function app where to look once the connection's made. That's because instead of having my function code in the root of the repository, it's actually in this path, Azure Local Local Func. Informing the function app of what this path looks like is as simple as going into configuration, adding a new application setting called project, and then specifying the path. So that path is Azure Local Local FUNC. We click OK, and it saves that setting, so now it knows where to look for the project. Just going to click Save here. Next, I'm going to go back into Platform Features and choose All Settings. This gives me a list of advanced settings that I can choose from. I'm going to go into Deployment Center, and here you can see there's a wizard that will help us connect with our source control repository. We have several different options, but just to demonstrate that this will truly work with any source provider, I'm going to go ahead and pick the external option. I select that and click Continue. I'm going to pick the App Service Build Service because it's built in to the Azure portal. We'll click Continue. Now it's asking me for information about my repository. I give it the repository name and path. So this is going to be AWS Migration. I give it the branch, which is master. And this is not a private repository, so I do not have to enter any credentials. I'll click Continue. It summarizes the information for me, and I click Finish. This will kick off a build process and begin the integration of my source control with my function app. Now the process says that it's successful. Let's go ahead and navigate back to our functions app and refresh. And here you can see it's picked up the HTTP trigger. I'm going to copy the function URL. I'm pasting it into a window. And we get the desired result. 3 is a prime. Next, I want to explore some of the platform features. One security feature is cross-origin resource sharing. This is necessary if you wish to access the function from JavaScript code running in a browser. You can specify your list of allowed origins, or if you want completely open access, you can use the wildcard to provide that. Currently, our application can be accessed anonymously. Anyone can gain access. By adding authentication, we can not only lock down the application to only authorized users, but we could also change the behavior based on the user who's logged in. So I'm going to go into authentication and authorization and turn it on. By default, this will still allow anonymous requests, but this sets it up so that it can use one of these providers. And each provider has different configuration values, such as API keys and secrets that you can set up. But you can see there are several built-in providers. Now, the assumption is you may already be logged in when you access the function app, and then you're able to access a custom URL to get information about the logged in user. However, Azure does provide the ability to handle the login sequence as well. What I'm going to do is change this to force a login with Azure Active Directory and save that change so that anonymous access is no longer allowed. I'm going to come over to this last call for the prime and refresh this. And what we'll see is now that I've configured it for Active Directory, I'm logged in, 
I'm forced to a sign in screen and asked if I want to allow these permissions. So I'll click accept. And you can see we get the desired result. And now I'm successfully signed in. Now we've restricted access to our function endpoint. The next thing we want to do is give our function endpoint an identity. If I want to access other resources in Azure, such as a database backend, or maybe spin up a VM or restart a VM for our automation purposes, I need credentials to log into those resources. Fortunately, with inside the function app, I can go into this identity option and set up an identity. There's system assigned and user assigned. If I click on system assigned and save it, it'll generate an identity for this function app that I can then go and provide as a role on other resources and give those resources explicit access from this identity. I can also do user assigned, which means I will have set up my own identity somewhere within the system and I want to assign that identity to this function app. Either way, this provides a context that it can reach out to other resources that is different from the context that it's logged in with. This concludes our series to migrate from AWS Lambda to Azure Functions and introduce you to features of Azure Functions. There's a lot more that you can do, and I highly encourage you to take advantage of some completely free online training. If you visit aka.ms slash learn A-Z-F-U-N-C-S, this will give you access to a module that's a hands-on module, no subscription, no credit card required, that will walk you through over seven hours of interactive training to get the most out of Azure Functions.